afternoon and welcome to Florida Repertory Theater's Stage at Home virtual talkback series for Friday, May 29th, 2020. My name is Jason Parrish. I'm your Associate Artistic Director and host for the afternoon. As is our custom here at Stage at Home, we want to start by thanking our loyal viewers who have supported us by tuning in every Friday for now eight weeks. Every week I hear from you, our viewers, about how much you look forward to these talks and how impressed you are at the level of artistry and dedication it takes to make Florida Rep run. So thank you for being here each week and staying engaged with us during this prolonged intermission. So whether you're a repeat viewer or you're joining us for the first time on our Zoom checkerboard, Facebook Live, or listening to our podcast, welcome to the discussion. So far in this series, you've heard from actors, directors, designers, and technicians, playwrights, and arts educators about the work they do at Florida Rep and beyond. And honestly, there are, those are the people you, you hear from the most as our patrons and our supporters. You hear from them at donor appreciation events, at popular Inside the Rep lecture series events, and at post-show talkbacks. But today, we wanted to take a different look at Florida Rep and introduce you to the team of arts administrators who work every day to make sure the company is running smoothly. This department, is working its best when no one notices that they're even here. So many of our panel today are faces you'll recognize from the lobby and other Florida Rep events, but until today, you may not have understood exactly what it is they do or what kind of skill and expertise it takes to do their job so effectively. So today, Stage at Home is pleased to welcome a team of incredibly smart and dedicated people who've seen this theater company through its many incredible successes, as well as some trying times that have required tough decision-making and resolve, including the one we find ourselves in right now. So please join me in welcoming some of my closest colleagues here at Florida Rep, who I'm honored to work with each day, whether I'm in the office or working from home. With us today are Executive Director John Martin. Finance, That'd be me. Yes. Finance Director Julieta Figueroa. Director of Operations Daniel Benzing. Marketing Director Brielle Daffeldecker. And Company Manager Aaron Martin. Welcome to Stage at Home. So we'll begin the discussion today with each panelist giving us an overview of what it is they do here at Florida Rep. Uh, we'll start with John Martin. Will each of you tell us uh, how long you've been with the company and what your job entails in a nice sort of broad general stroke? Uh, and then later on, we'll talk about uh, what you're working on now and at different points throughout the season. So John, why don't you introduce yourself to us and tell us how long you've been with the company and what it is you do? I have been with the company 19 seasons. I will enter my 20th season uh, when we open again in the fall. Um, and my background in theater is for 23 years, first in San Francisco for three years before the founders, uh, Bob and Carrie Lund Cassiopo brought me to uh, Florida Rap in uh, September 2001, which we know was an extraordinary month for our country. So I've been through so, so many trials and tribulations um, right from the very beginning here. And uh, we're going to make it through this one uh, valiantly. And so I am so proud of everyone I have worked with over the years. My background, I have um, degrees in political science, uh, social work and law and it has served me so well as uh, on the production side of the theater for the 23 years that I've done this. And I am humbled by my experiences that I have. Our board of directors have always been incredible and I see a number of you up on the screen and we will persevere. This is going to work out just fine for us. We are well suited to take on any challenges that we have in the future. And day in and day out is like, I'm the manager of managers. And uh, I can tell you that this team is the best we have ever had. And I know that we are going to make it into, uh, through this next, next decade with uh, the most wonderful theater imaginable. And as soon as we can get back up on the boards, we will. Thank you, John. Um, I wanted to move next. Uh, well, before we move to our panel, uh, let me just share the screen real quick so you can see some of the images that go along with it. Here's uh, uh, a lot of these images you'll see as we share uh, photos. Oh, that look, look old. 
<laughs> they'll look like we're always having a party when in fact uh, we don't usually take pictures of our admin staff except for when we're at events. So uh, all of the photos you'll see today are mostly from gala events and, uh, and others. So, uh, so just so you know, we're, we do do work, I promise. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so thanks, John, for that. And before we start the next round of intros, uh, I wanted to point out something both coincidental and kind of remarkable. Many may not realize that with the exception of John, everyone else on this panel, myself included, uh, began our professional careers in this business by uh, completing an internship at Florida Rep. So as each of the rest of you introduces yourself, will you tell us what intern class you were a, a part of and how that experience has informed the trajectory of your career, both at the Rep and in other positions you've held and, uh, and how that's been informative for you going forward. Uh, so Julietta, why don't you tell us a bit about who you are and what it is you do for the theater? Yeah. Hi, my name is Julietta. I am the finance director. Um, I've been here at Florida Rap for four seasons and out of the four, two being uh, the finance director. Um, my, my first year I was the business intern. Um, my intern year 16, 17. And then my second year being the business associates. And gratefully I've been you know promoted and my third and fourth season as the finance director and what my role is that um, I basically manage the ins and outs of our business office and so that may include um, handling all the bookkeeping which is the you know reconciliations um, accounts payable entering all um, transactions etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, but I also process and approve of payrolls, sometimes two payrolls um, biweekly, um, and also help onboard new staff members, um, benefits enrollment, um, and also handle any HR issues that may arise, which um, over the years we've gotten bigger and bigger. And so um, that, that's also, that's not rare for us to have, um, but that's why I'm here. Excellent. Uh, and you've been an invaluable member of our team these last number of years, so thank you so and much. And she's a hard-ass people. <laughs> <laughs> she, she makes sure that we stay in line. So because this is live, we didn't get to bleep that, so I'm so sorry. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, okay. uh, uh, the podcast will be the bleep version if you're, uh, if, if you're interested. Uh, but yes, yes, Julietta has been just integral. Thank you, Julietta. Thank you, John. Uh, Daniel, you are next on the list to tell us a bit about yourself and um, make sure when you mention this, not only did you start at this company as an intern uh, in a formal sort of way, uh, but your history with the company goes back even further. So don't forget to mention that. And I will tell you ahead of time, I didn't go back and pull photographs from this period that I'm talking about. So you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, hello, uh, I'm Daniel Benzing. Uh, it's great to see everybody on, on uh, the Zoom screen here. Uh, so many people I have seen at the theater, uh, you know, work with, work, work on your subscriptions. It's really a delight to see you all. And yes, I go way back. Um, I did a play with Bob and Carrie on Sanibel. I did Kill a Mockingbird when I was in eighth grade. And then I did a lot of, you know, I did plays in the area. Um, I did an acting internship here. I was an intern. I was actually uh, an administration intern before I was here. So I was really a glutton for punishment. I did two internships. Um, <laughs> Uh, and they were great. And, and you know, um, I, I just, uh, I've had such a wonderful experience with Florida Rep. And now, now, I, I, so I did that. I, I, I was in company management for a little while, which Aaron Martin is our company manager now. Um, and then uh, as Florida Rep got bigger, we started to notice we wanted somebody to sort of oversee the productions um, uh, it, from the front of house perspective, just making sure the audience had a good experience. So I started doing that. And uh, overseeing the box office, I work with Julietta. Um, you know, I'll attest that she is a hard ass, a great hard ass. <laughs> um, you know, we like to have a little fun. <laughs> and uh, of course, I also have my fiance here working at Florida Repertory Theater, so I'm really blessed. Um, but yeah, you know, I handle your subscriptions. Um, you know, I'll, I'll introduce a show to you. I'll, I'll I'll be at the theater a lot of the times when you are. So uh, I, I do a lot of patron relations, patron service. Excellent. Thank you, Daniel. And I will mention that in, in eight weeks of this stage at home, 
uh, with all of our actors, directors, and designers. We've not yet once had to deal with swear words. So uh, <laughs> congrats to our administrative department for, uh, really, for uh, breaking the seal on that. Um, a couple of you said to me, are, are you sure we're going to be interesting enough? Is this, are you sure this is going to be interesting enough? And my, I think my job is, might be too boring. And I said, no, no, I, believe me, uh, I think we're going to keep everyone entertained. Uh, so make sure, uh, those before we move on, uh, for those of you who have questions inside the panel, either uh, in our Zoom, make sure to leave a comment for us in the chat window. If you're watching on Facebook and you want to uh, ask a question, you can put it in the comment thread there. So the chat window on Zoom and the comment thread. Uh, Brielle, you are next, our marketing director. So give us a, give us a, an overview of who you are and what it is you do for the web. Started with the company in 2013 as a marketing intern. And um, following that year, I was asked to be the marketing manager, which I did for, I believe, three seasons after my internship. Um, after that, I um, moved up to North Carolina for a brief year. Um, and then found my way back. So I'm, I'm so happy to be back as the marketing director. And um, I oversee all of the um, campaigns that we do, both print, digital, all of our social media. Um, and then we do all of the um, photography, um, not all of the photography, but um, the PR photography and video work in-house uh, with my one team member who is also my brother. So <laughs> um, it's a very close, uh, definite uh, staff. So. Um, very happy to be with uh, this group of people. Excellent. Thank you so much, Brielle. Uh, and Aaron Martin, our company manager, if you could uh, give us a, a, a thumbnail picture of what it is to be a company manager and who you are. Um, yeah. Hi, I'm Aaron. Um, I came to the company four years ago with Julieta in the intern group of 2016, 2017. I actually started as stage management intern and then kind of got into company management. Um, and for company management, a simple answer is I deal with the housing and travel of all of our guest artists. Uh, yeah, so the housing and, and travel. So if you could ex expound a bit on what it means uh, when you say the housing. Okay. okay. And we'll, we'll, we'll get a little more in depth later on, but, uh, but mention to us how many units you're talking about when you say housing. Okay, um, sure. Um, so Florida Rep, uh, has 44 bedrooms out of all of our apartments and everything. Uh, we have eight apartments at a location for interns and staff. And then for all of our guest artists, the actors, designers, and everything, we have 18 apartments um, located all downtown. Excellent. And I will <laughs> ask you a bit later on to go into a little more depth about how you manage all of that. Uh, so thank you all so very much. Um, I wanted to start the questions off. John, if you can, um, if you can sort of drill down for us about what your what your day to day uh, life is here at Florida Rep. And if you could talk to us about how the company has changed and grown since you've come here. Uh, I know that's a long, a long time ago. And so uh, don't worry about about uh, really digging into it for us. And how 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 has that growth been managed? What's made that growth possible? The, okay, uh, going backwards, uh, the growth has been made possible by everyone around our screen and by everyone in the community, uh, the city of Fort Myers, the state of Florida, and even uh, the federal government on occasion. Most particularly uh, in the last five years with the leadership of Renee Petchy and the development team that we never really had before, that she came into our lives has built our contributed revenue to nearly 40% of the overall revenue of the operations. Uh, the, when, I, when I came into Florida Rep in um, the week of 9-11 actually, and we had to go through that pandemic, and <clears throat> we, we discovered that there were things that we had to cut immediately from our expense side uh, of our budget and uh, with the founders, the Cassiopos, and with the team at that time, we were able to do so. And by the very first year after I arrived, we broke even. It had not happened in the first three years because the capitalization of a professional theater company is tremendous. And so we figured it out. 
And ever since then, our reputation made the donations start to pour in. It made the grants kick up, the corporate sponsorship built up until the Great Recession, of course, of 2007, 2008. We went through that by restructuring ourselves, uh, the wonderful leadership of the board of directors, and uh, we were able to get through over that hurdle. And then we have built our participation numbers to nearly 100,000 and just passed. And I'm talking about in all programming with folks who love to come to see the professional theater and those who are increasingly loving our outreach and education programming, which is pretty much getting close to half of our participation numbers. So with the kids who are involved, their families and friends, and our patrons who now see what these young people are doing. So we are have been so fortunate uh, to have had the support we have at the contributed level, and many of you are right here. Uh, and we will continue to have that support, I have no doubt. But I think that it is the hard work that everybody has always done on staff, even though staff changes up, folks move on to uh, other pastures. But the bottom line is, um, everyone is down with the program. We are doing sensationally because of the teamwork of all of us. Yeah, yeah, all thank you. you. Uh, and if you could take a, a sort of typical day for you in the, in the height of season, what might we find John Martin working on uh, on a typical day or on a particularly busy day? So Okay, being bad government, <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it's like we are, we are licensed about 20 times from the, the, the local government to state government to federal government. There is so much of that that will factor into every day of my life. It will be working with my artistic director, my finance director, and making the tough decisions that we have to do. We, particularly now, we find ourselves again, having to make those tough decisions. Um, it's also, um, HR, uh, human resources, uh, whenever those issues uh, emerge. We are very fortunate that we are hooked up with a personnel services organization who can do all the paperwork on it, but the human interaction about the decisions that we make and being able to explain those. Um, uh, the, all, it's just a tremendous amount of paperwork we have to do and staying on top of all of that. But the most important thing that I do is touch base with everybody and what they're doing and, and their jobs and make sure that they have the resources to complete their tasks. And um, I, I feel very blessed that we, throughout my 20 years here, that I have always had people in positions who are able to do those things. Excellent, and if you don't mind me asking, how has, uh, how has your work life changed since Florida Rep was able to uh, purchase the, the property downtown that we now own, our home in the Arcade Theater? And if you wanna talk a bit about how that came about, feel free, but how has that changed your day to day, John? Um, for a number of us, um, me particularly, maybe, but also for Greg and Julieta and others, uh, we are instructing our, our uh, property management team about how we need things to be in our spaces. We're so blessed that we were able, through the anonymous um, donations of others, to purchase these very valuable uh, properties in downtown Fort Myers. And um, it's just that it adds something to our day every day. And Greg can speak to it, and Renee can speak to it, and Julietta can speak to it. it it's like we 
We, we are very much involved in how the property is managed and that's going to go on for a while until we hit um, our stride with um, our property management team. Um, and so, yes, that, that adds a significant amount of work to our day. Yeah. Uh, thank you, John. In addition to being, you know, doing what we do and, yeah. and because we're a theater company, mm -hmm. but they get it. That, that I will say this about our property management team. It's Cushman and Wakefield. They're international and, um, uh, and they all come to the theater, uh, the folks locally, but um, we're having to educate them more than they're educating us. So it does add to our time. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you so you much, significantly. Uh, and so before we move on, I wanted to make special mention, uh, Ron, uh, um, um, John has mentioned Renee a couple of times, but uh, not on the panel today, but it, instrumental in, in our administration department is Renee Pesci, our development director, uh, who's in charge of the wing of the theater that uh, uh, manages fundraising and donor relations. Uh, she's on the call today, so everyone wave to Renee. Uh, and Oh yeah, um, she's gonna get her own panel by herself. <laughs> Um, and Greg Longenhagen, our artistic director, uh, who's in charge of the artistic vision of the organization and the, the casting and, and uh, season selection operations. Uh, I figured both of those things are uh, topics in and of themselves. So, uh, and many of you are aware of Renee and Greg and what it is they do. So I didn't include them today, but uh, only because we only have an hour to talk. Uh, so I wanted to move next. Uh, Aaron, if you'll talk a bit about, uh, about what it really does mean to to dig in and manage the, the company, right? The company management. And when you say, when we say company, what is it we mean? We don't necessarily mean the staff members, though you do a significant amount of outreach to the staff uh, and managing of the staff, but it means our guest artists, actors, directors, designers. So at the height of season, how many people at the, at the fullest point are here in addition to the 50 staff members? Uh, and and what, what do you have to do to manage their lives? From um, so I mean, normally we have all of our apartments filled, um, at least at one point in the season. Our, we have even extras, but we'll put people in up in hotels and everything. So at the most, we'll have, what is it? Um, <laughs> I want to say 50, 40 guest artists here at one time, possibly, at yeah. the height of season. Oh, yeah. Um, when with that, um, it's picking them up from the airport, getting them to getting them to the apartment, showing them around, um, making sure they know everything that they need to know, the location for trash, their Wi-Fi. Um, but also sure. booking their travel from the front end. You're you're sort of oh, I mean, from the hiring point, right? Oh yeah, um, we reach out to them two months before they like even come for their first rehearsal, being like, "Hi, let's get you a plane ticket. Here we go. Come on down to Florida." Um, so, and then after that process, it's making sure their room is ready for them. Um, equity has some, some rules about what they need in their apartments and everything. So we make sure we give it to them. Um, and then once they're here, it's just making sure they're comfortable. Everything's working. Um, I mm. like to sleep with my phone on loud because sure. you never know when they're going to need you in the middle of the night or early in the morning. So... And, and if you can talk a bit about, uh, just so people don't think that it, it's just whoever gets here gets a bedroom and whoever's here first gets this bedroom. So I'll bring up just a couple of graphics that sort of illustrate what we're talking about. But tell us, tell us how the housing chart works. And um, Daniel, you used to be the company manager, so feel free to join in as well. Uh, but Aaron, take us through the housing chart and I'll bring up a couple of graphics for you. Okay, so the housing chart is luckily a document that was built before my time. Um, so, as y'all can see, it just shows all of our apartments, um, and really, um, we get this built before we even cast the shows. We do this to see how many, um, apartments we need, to see if we need how many hotels we need, um, and then the puzzle starts about who needs what apartment, um, uh, because we do have some people that, um, have some, um, oh, what is the word, handicap? Go see. Aaron, um, are there any? Are there ever any difficult people? Just no, saying. no, you don't need to go to that. You don't need I to. Go there. We have no <laughs> difficult. Very <laughs> willing conversation. I was Everyone's just... great, and there's no challenges at all. <laughs> um, no. Um, 
so and then it's fitting people in there and then if you move one thing i promise you you're going to move five other things in this document right so um, down so down the left hand side what people are looking at is uh for example the month of february here those are all of our units that we can put someone in uh and as you can see like he's talking about with this jenga puzzle you move one thing three things move or ten things move. um and aaron uh, not to say that people are difficult, but what if you could talk a bit about all of the housing is different, right? We have some one bedroom, some two bedrooms, some studios, some that are close, some that are far away. So it's so it's a negotiation, right, about who goes where and what happens. Exactly. Some people have pets they want to bring, and we have pet friendly apartments with tile. It's easier to clean up. It's uh, you don't have to worry about like any fleas or anything infesting carpet if it's tile. So. We have our pet friendly apartment, just like a block down the road from the theater, not a block, like less about than a mile, a mile away from the theater, um, that we like to put people in there just to make sure they sure. can have their pets and everything. And so and, when do you start building the housing chart? When does that um, start housing happening? chart is normally built towards the end of the season. When we start winding down, we're at our last shows, have few people here. We start building this once we know the shows, know the cast size, kind of get an idea of what's in and the head of next season. It's sort of constantly evolving, right? It's, it's never yes. finished. Right? We, as y'all saw, that was version six of the housing chart. <laughs> so we go through, anytime there's a major change, we just make a new housing chart and save it. So it's always a fun change from looking at the first one to the sixth one. Sure. Uh, and just so everyone's aware, in addition to, uh, to housing those people, um, uh, our artists, we have to make sure that those apartments have furniture and have dishes and pots and pans. And so that's why lots of times uh, you'll see in our program that we're looking for uh, furniture or TVs uh, for our, our housing um, and things like that. Uh, and many of you have in fact uh, come forward with amazing donations. So uh, thank you all so much, uh, especially with so many housing units. Um, some Eugene asks, where did you house Dr. Ruth? Uh, we put her up at the Hotel Indigo. Uh, we didn't, we didn't uh, put Ru Dr. Ruth up in housing. We made sure she was taken care of. Uh, though I will attest, <laughs> since they don't have uh, room service there, I brought her breakfast from the, the diner down the street every morning. She put in her standing order. Uh, so she was well taken care of, but I didn't make Aaron uh, uh, have to worry about her. He had enough to do uh, with the cast. Um, and then Julieta, I wanted to move to you and John, if you could talk a bit about um, the various other organizations who you deal with. You mentioned MBA uh, for uh, HR. Um, we also deal very closely with Actors Equity Association, with the Stage Directors and Choreographer Society. Um, Darlene asks, uh, who does the negotiating with uh, the unions like Actors Equity and how is that done? Um, so if you wanted to talk a bit about the, our relationship with those other organizations and, and how it works uh, with you as our point person in a number of those ways and John. Sure. Um, let me start with um, MBA. Um, MBA is a outsourced HR company. Um, MBA standing for Modern Business Associates. Um, they're a company located here in Florida. Uh, we've um, worked with them for several, several years um, and we um, are very, very happy to be working with them because they're highly, highly valuable to us, um, especially because they have professionals who um, specialize in things like payroll taxes, unemployment, uh, workers' comp, um, benefits, um, uh, HR, uh, which comes in you know, good uh, use because sometimes when there's things that we don't know exactly how to handle or we don't have the knowledge for, uh, especially because the business office, my office um, is a very small office. Currently, it only consists of myself um, but usually during the season, it's a two member office, so of myself and a business associate. Um, but sometimes things fall out of our scope. Um, so, for example, if there's an HR issue that uh, we want to make sure it's handled in the correct, you know, sensitive manner, uh, we would reach out to um, MBA. Uh, and they're just like a phone call email away um, and they have lawyers and professionals on their end to be able to help us guide us and consult us and how they would recommend that we take action and um, usually uh, 
they're very, very good on being, um, you know, keeping up to date with how we handle a certain situation. They're in, um, they usually clock in saying, hey, how's it going? How did this conversation with this employee go? Or do you want us to talk to the employee? Would that be something that we would want? Um, so I'm very happy to be uh, working with MBA to have that expertise, just a phone call away that some of us may not have. Um, and then um, Equity, Actors Equity Association, uh, for those of you who may not know, is a labor union who represents uh, theatrical stage actors and stage managers. And every year at the beginning of, or every season, at the beginning of every season, um, we renegotiate our agreement with um, Actors Equity. Um, and we come up and agree on a collective bargaining agreement um, which, in which in our case we have a LOA, a letter of agreement with the union um, and we make sure um, from that agreement we are on the same page with Actors' Equity and we abide, we're making sure we're abiding by their rules. Uh, for example, like Aaron touched base, uh, there are rules on how our actors' housing uh, needs uh, need to be set up. So for example, there needs to be cable, uh, Wi-Fi, I think a phone. Um, it, it, there's some other things that Aaron can touch uh, base on, um, things that need to be backstage, um, how things need to be run uh, properly to be able to take care uh, and make sure everything is uh, met on the actors or the stage manager's needs. Um, as for SDC uh, and USA, um, we do not have collective bargaining. Us, Juliana, tell us uh, what are those unions? What do those stand for? Stage uh, SDC, Stage Directors and Choreographer Union. And then USA is the United Scenic Artist Union. So the designer unions. Um, so all the lighting designers, set designers, sound designers, projectionists, um, they um, or so it depends on the designer. Some are non-union, but some are under that union. Um, most of the designers that we work with um, are union, um, and we don't have uh, collective bargaining agreements with those two unions. But we do have, you know, agreements that um, there aren't specific, there aren't a lot of rules that we would have to abide by. Um, but there are agreements that we sign off uh, with those individuals. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Daniel, we'll go to you next. I wanted to ask uh, you, you, not only do you manage your front of house staff, uh, the box office staff, but you also work with our volunteers uh, and you have done so for quite some time. So can you talk a bit about, um, talk about our, our volunteer corps uh, and your relationship with them? Yeah, I mean, it, it's such a wonderful part of my job. You know, I didn't touch on it on what I said I did with the theater, but yeah, you know, uh, I, I've worked uh, managing the shows a lot the last couple of years and even when you're an intern you know you work in some capacity on the shows and a lot of that so uh, you get relationships with these people going back for years and, and I, I have so many wonderful relationships with the volunteers I'm really lucky you know we, we have people that volunteer their time at the theater that are just really lovely people you know really fascinating people that come from all walks of life that just want to be involved in the theater and um, you know we're, we're, we're grateful for our volunteer corps. I see several of them on this uh, Zoom call right now so it's really it's really been one of the best parts of the job and it's not even really close. Sally Jocelyn our volunteer coordinator um, does a phenomenal job scheduling. I do a lot of you know I'm at the show so if there's anything that comes up you know and then working with them for, for getting into shows and stuff like that and if you were on the Barefoot in the Park call uh, Mike still has not, um, you know, turned in that 10%. So I can see it on Monday. Um, I think for pizza, so I'll bring it up then. But yes. Uh, for those who don't know what Daniel's talking about, uh, we, we were able to cast Mike Filipowski uh, in a small role in Barefoot in the Park, and uh, he's on our volunteer uh, core. Uh, John also mentioned our education programs, and so for those of you who might have missed it, last week's Stage at Home, which is available online, uh, was a, a talk with our education director and a playwright, Eric Koble, about um, the conservatory program and how they're creating a play for that. So if you're interested, uh, feel free to look those up. Daniel, I wanted to ask you uh, also, we have 
on a busy night at Florida Rep uh, with two spaces running, we'll have over 500 people uh, coming to the theater to see a play. Uh, so what, I wanted to ask you, what kind of planning is involved uh, and how many people are on the ground uh, to deal with that influx of those patrons and, and sort of what's that like for you? Right. Well, well, you know, we'd have people in the box office obviously working uh, in that capacity, two people. Um, e each show gets a, a what's called a house manager, so somebody that communicates with stage management and, you know, is there as a, um, a resource for the patrons, you know, um, for, for anything that could happen. So there's that person, there's people working concessions, and then of course there's, you know, uh, six to eight volunteers generally, maybe even more, uh, depending on the performance. They're doing all sorts of things, uh, you know, handling tickets, passing out playbills, uh, they can work in, in the box office. They they can do anything. You know, they 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 do everything actually. So it's 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 a lot of people. But once once we've done it a couple of times, you know, usually at the top of the season, you might bring on a few people, and if you're lucky enough, you can keep them for a couple of seasons. Um, you know, once once we have done it a couple of times, we can we can kind of have a nice flow with it, and we really know what we need to do. Um, you know, but it is it is a challenge, especially if both spaces are full and, you know, we're dealing with an old building and we don't need to go into all of the, um, you know, intricacies that's involved <laughs> in that building because we all know, know that building and love it very much. But there are challenges, um, uh, but it's it's a lot of fun too. We usually have a good time. We try to have a good time. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Brielle, I'll ask you, uh, give us a bit of, tell us what your training was in. Uh, did you go to school for marketing or did you go for school, go to school for theater or a bit of both? And how did that set you up for uh, success at Florida Rep when you, when you got here? Yeah, I, I was definitely a combination. Um, I was a theater or I was a marketing major. So I have my degree in marketing, um, but I was a minor in theater. I was two classes short of being a double major, but, um, <laughs> I definitely spent a lot of time in the theater um, throughout college um, and that kind of started in middle school. Um, so I just have had that passion for theater that carried me on. I knew I didn't really want to be an actor um, and I dabbled in other things backstage but um, marketing was my real passion so I'm one of the very fortunate people um, that can actually do what they went to school for, um, so specifically too. Um, so I'm very thankful for that. And um, I did some internships in marketing um, at theaters. Um, I did try at stage um, when I was still in school in North Carolina. And then I worked as both a company manager and a marketing assistant at a summer stock right before I came to Florida Rep. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's rare that that happens, but I'm very lucky that that's the case for me. And then if you would talk a bit about some of the skills you've picked up on the job uh, or things that you've realized, oh, I should learn how to do that. Yeah, um, that's what the most beautiful things about this job is it's kind of allowed me to grow and challenge myself. Um, so as strange as it is, I hadn't done any graphic design in college. That wasn't part of the curriculum that um, my degree was in. So I knew, you know, pretty early on that I, it's something I wanted to get better at. Um, we're lucky at Flutter Up to have a graphic designer um, out of Atlanta. She's fantastic, Daryl. Um, but it's something I was interested in. I wanted to you know, cultivate and learn more about. So um, now I feel so much more confident in that. And then another huge one is photography. And I started doing that um, over the summers for the summer camps. Um, I would do some of the summer camp shows. And I was like, this is something I really am interested in now. And it's really grown um, to one of my favorite aspects of my job. Um, we're lucky to have um, Joe on the team who is very talented in that as well. Um, he's much more in video, which I'm not great at. Um, but those two things really have been um, really supported and it's, it's nice to be able to, um, you know, try new things and continue to grow. Excellent. And in the time that you've been here, how has the marketing department shifted uh, as we move into a more digital world? And, um, if, and if, you, if you would also talk about, Brielle puts together a, an end of year report uh, every season and shows us sort of what the, the numbers tell us, what the data tells us. So if you wouldn't mind talking about that and if you want to mention what, what surprises you from that data. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the first part of your question, what was that? <laughs> uh, how has the marketing department How has it changed, yes. Yeah. So um, 
When I first started, it was very um, print based. So we were in the newspaper every single day. We did a lot of print mailers, um, which is great. And I know that a lot of our um, demographic really does enjoy having something physical in their hand, but I thought it was a missed opportunity that we weren't doing really anything digitally or putting any money behind it. So after some research, we um, chose this um, arts marketing company um, that we partner with and they do all of our digital ad campaigns and we've seen the highest return on investment from that among anything else we do. So it's really been beneficial to us. Um, we did a redo of the website in 2017, 2016. 15, um, I believe, yeah. And that was a big jump forward. Um, it's, it's hard because it's always so evolving. So you kind of always have to keep up with the trends and continue to adapt with that kind of thing. But um, I'm a very numbers-based person. I like to be guided by um, results and be able to track things. So that's another element that I really enjoyed with the digital aspect um, is that you could see hard numbers of how it was working. Um, and through that, you know, I always like to let those results lead me in my decisions the following year. So um, a few years ago, I started doing an end of year uh, marketing report and it started off relatively small um, with me just pulling all the numbers so that I could reflect on it the next year. And it grew from there. And um, <laughs> I did it again a few weeks ago and it was like 78 slides. So I'm glad that the staff- uh... <laughs> We're gonna go through all 78 now, guys. So just sit in there. Uh, we're gonna go through each one. Wow. <laughs> No, we won't, but I appreciate everyone, um, you know, their attention on that. Um, but I think it's a really great tool um, to, you know, just to be able to see things at the end of the year, what worked and what didn't. Excellent. I'd like to ask the entire group uh, this question. So uh, if we can, we can sort of start with John and go down the line. Um, what is, what's like the, what is the typical day for you? If you would, if you wouldn't mind sort of going through uh, pick a pick a time of the season, whether it's right in the height of the season. Like, what is what does the day look like for you? Uh, what are the various projects you're working on, John? It's it's it's, pri it's primarily uh, having conversations with folks who have questions about our licensing, uh, legal questions, property management questions. Now, as we have uh, taken on a um, few hundred acres in downtown Fort Myers. It's whatever is at the top of anybody's list and the, as department heads and, and talking our way through that, uh, making decisions. Uh, it's finances and um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's never the same day in and day out. You never know what curveball's coming your way. Uh, most recently, we know what we're all having to deal with. And, and devising our plan for how we're going to return to stage uh, is a big part of sure. our, all of our days. So. Sure. Julieta, how about for you a typical day, a normal day, you know, taking, taking what we're going through right now uh, sort of out of it, you know, what is a, what is a normal in-season day for you? Okay, um, well, I think it's the same as John Moran where I, I can't, it, it's just up in the air, sometimes it just varies. Um, there are permanent tasks, though, that I know I have to complete on a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly basis, but everything in between all of that. Um, usually I have a, a to-do list uh, for each day, but sometimes even that can be turned upside down depending on whatever happens. So um, I guess like a crazy day during in-season, um, I could, I, well, first off, I work really, really closely with company management or Aaron, uh, who is our company manager. Um, we work very, very closely. So um, he, um, thank God I have him to help me uh, create contracts uh, for um, our equity actors and stage managers. And so he would work on that. Uh, but sometimes if something ha someone gets injured, someone fell off a ladder on stage or something like that, 
he would run out and help them in any way to take them to the ER, or urgent care, um, fill out their paperwork, and I revise the paperwork and make sure that gets sent off to MBA. Um, MBA is a, a, a little bit more information about MBA. MBA is the middleman between us and uh, the insurance carrier. Uh, we just have to make sure we report any injuries um, accordingly with the paperwork that they give us. And so Aaron makes sure that paperwork is filled out and that the employee uh, gets seen and he helps transport them to wherever they need to be um, in terms of their care. Um, and then he comes back to me and reports it and I make sure that paperwork is correct and send it off to MBA and then work with MBA with any other information that they may need um, for that. Um, so that can happen. Um, I could be trying to finish payroll, which is uh, usually on the Monday is where I, that's my first priority is to complete payroll um, while also touching base with everyone in the theater, making sure we're on the same page. Uh, well, if someone gets injured, I'm gonna be on the phone call, on the phone a lot with Aaron, making sure that, that employee is all right and that the paperwork is filled out <laughs> and uh, that contracts are filled out. And um, it, even on Tuesdays when we have first, first day rehearsals for our shows, they always start on a Tuesday, um, Aaron, is always on the same page on with me on those days to make sure all the contracts are ready to go um in and ready to go for the actors the stage managers or even if the director hasn't signed his contract i will be there ready for him to sign it once they walk into the room um and we're all on the same same page and everything needs to be signed and everything squared away um in terms of everyone's pay and their writers and um everything that, that has been negotiated before that point is signed off accordingly on paper so that's th those are just things i um a few things i may handle in, yeah. in a day. and and just so everyone's aware on a day like that say a gentleman's guide to love and murder or cabaret or a, a big show like that on a day like that when they have their first rehearsal that is a lot of paperwork to track down and you've you've gotten it down to a science you and aaron uh really really making that uh, a, a very streamlined process and it makes a huge difference this is all about we as arts administrators want to make sure that the actors and the designers don't have to worry about all of the little things they just need to be able to go in and make make art and so uh, when all of this is going smoothly, the hope is you don't even notice all of the work that goes into it. So uh, you and Aaron have really, really uh, nailed it uh, as far as making sure that all of those processes are streamlined and simple. So thanks for that. Uh, next on the list for a typical day is Daniel. So give us a day in the life. You know, it could really be anything. Um, the box office will open up at 10 a.m. You know, generally I'd like to be there a little bit earlier than that just to see what's going on. I mean, um, it, it, sometimes I, uh, things happen. I've got younger people that work for me in front of house. So sometimes I'm covering in different spots. Maybe I'm working a show. Maybe I'm at the parking gate. Maybe I'm serving you a drink. You know, uh, the day can take a lot of different turns. It's the arts uh, or ordering soft goods, stuff like that. So it really just depends. I mean, um, but you know, in Haida season, we're, we're go, go, go. Now we're sort of in the, in the planning mode and uh, you know renewal mode and stuff like that and with the added wrinkle of well you guys all know what's going on right so um <laughs> uh but but my typical day you know start with the box office and kind of go from there and and we just see what happens um you know and it's a it's a little known fact but i think a lot of people will appreciate it but you are actually the mastermind behind the themed drink at the concession uh -huh. stand are you not i am i am <laughs> that's <laughs> That's that's something that they all talk about. Everybody that I see will say, "You're the mastermind. Those yeah. drinks, baby." And they uh, say that voice too. <laughs> yeah, they talk just like that. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, Aaron, what is a day in the life for you? And I know that this changes on a day-to-day -day basis, but you know, talk about one of those days where you have lots of pickups. So, like maybe the Monday before rehearsals start, or the Sunday okay. after it closes. Sure. Um, so normal day wake up go check the p.o box for the theater always got to make sure our bills are coming in and get those paid that's so that's a pretty regular thing i do um and then um i just look at my google calendar 
And if it's a big day, we'll go to the, my, me and my team will go to the airport. Maybe we'll split it up and each one of us will go like three times. Sometimes we plan smartly and we have like a big group come. So we'll send a car for the bags and a car for the actors. Um, and then I'm gonna say cabaret. Cabaret, we started at 7 a.m. and we were not done until 11 p.m. Going, taking trips to the airports and getting actors in and moving them into their apartments and getting that all settled. So, um, and then I'm always washing bedding and towels <laughs> and everything that the actors use once they leave. Um, there's a giant pile um, in, in a theater right now that I'm waiting to start washing once our dryer and washing machines hook back up. Um, oh, terrific. Yeah, and then all the surprises that come. Uh, for example? Uh, yeah, so um, if anyone gets injured or anything, I'm the one to take them to the hospital. I'm the one to go sit with them. Um, you never know when that's going to happen. Um, I was and by, in Naples. And it could be. It doesn't necessarily have to be an injury. It could be a sore throat. It could be a fever. It could be a uh, any number of things. Right. Yeah, I was in uh, Naples for a birthday. Well, yes, with the notion that people are injured all the time, <laughs> they're not. They're not. Occasionally, it happens. But at times, we have you know we have upwards of eighty to a hundred people here working on staff or on a show, and so. Uh, sometimes people will say, you know what, I'm not feeling well, or my knee, or, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, so we've, you know, we, we had an actress for Steel Magnolia show up uh, and have an allergic reaction, and so she spent the first couple of days of rehearsal at an urgent care, you know, so a number of things. Uh, yeah, I was there with her. And, and sometimes John goes in on those things. Uh, you were saying Naples, Aaron? Yeah, that was my story. I was, at, I was at the Naples Zoo for a birthday party with a friend, and she called me and wanting to go to the hospital. And I was like, okay, um, hold on, I didn't drive to Naples. <laughs> One second. So I called John, he took her, I got an Uber and Ubered from Naples to Fort Myers to get my car and then drove and met her. And I was like, John, go yeah. home. Let me spend the rest of the time with her. Why you were in Naples. Because, uh, because when those artists come here, um, you know, they don't have a, they don't have a, a network. They don't have a basis for uh, a, a base of operations, really. So they rely on the theater to manage those sorts of things for them. And we give them packets with a welcome packet with restaurants, right? And we give them all the different things that they could, uh, directions to places and menus to things. And, and so it, we do really, you know, manage a lot, especially if uh, an actor has never been here before. So thank you. And what I want to say is when we shut down in mid-March, the actors who were with us at that time, who no longer were gonna be on stage, we housed. We kept them, no cost to them, in our Bradford apartments, and there is still a family with us uh, to this day uh, who do not wanna to return to New York yet. So we we go the extra mile for our guest yeah, artists. Truly, truly. Uh, Brielle, I don't think I, I asked you to give us the sort of picture of your day on a typical day well i love a list um, <laughs> um but as everyone said you know we're kind of in the nature of things um changing so it um it's different every day but um it usually involves submitting ads meeting some of those deadlines we could have a photo shoot whether it's um a pr photo shoot before the show actually opens or when we have nick adams come in um during the run um, you know, working on a future brochure or something like that, um, all the social media posts and things. So it, it's, it's ever changing, but, um, always exciting. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, John, Julian asks, uh, do we own the parking lot? So, uh, I, I take for granted that perhaps people, uh, on this call know, uh, this is a year ago, almost, almost to the day, uh, that we made this announcement. So if you could talk a bit about the purchase of the property and how that was made possible and what it includes and and uh, and Greg if you obviously if you want to join in on that conversation as well but John to answer Julian's question do you own the parking lot but then to give a little bit of context yeah does he want a space <laughs> is that what he's asking for he just says do we own it I'm not gonna get to it I won't question his motives we do own the parking lot block uh, that most of you are familiar with, if not all of you, except for the Hall of 50 States, which is owned by the city of Fort Myers and the ground underneath it. And we are in constant communication with the city about what you're going to do about this 
uninhabitable building. Um, but yes, all the rest of the property around the whole 50 states, the parking lot, does belong to our two limited licensed corporations that we created, uh, Parking Lot LLC and the developed lot uh, where the Bradford, the Arcade and Art Stage Theaters are and the retail and professional office um, units. Um, and um, it's highly valuable. Uh, we were able to get this through the anonymous donations of a, of a group of wonderful people uh, who wanted this theater to be here in perpetuity. And uh, that is our mission. Uh, we are inundated with uh, development ideas from all over the world, particularly as to the parking lot block but we have a commitment to the folks who made this possible that it would not disrupt the theater's operations on a seasonal basis or the ability for our patrons to park on the ground and be able to walk across the street to our to the theater. And so, and we, so that happens. So what you're saying is uh, to those who are listening, no matter what happens, um, you'll always have a parking space over there. That's right. Uh, Thank you for that, John. I'll ask the entire panel before we wrap it up. If uh, if anyone else has questions, this is your your time to put that in the in the comment window or in the uh, chat window on Zoom. Um, but uh, I'll ask each of you what are what are you most looking forward to uh, about when we get back when we get back to a sense of normalcy. What is the thing you're looking forward to the most, or what have you missed the most in these months of uh, of intermission, John? Oh, for me. Um, I, I'm telling you right now, it's watching people coming out of a theater experience on either of our stages. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a comedy, if it's a drama, if it's contemporary, if it's classic. Just listening to folks pour out of the spaces talking about what they enjoyed, how important it was. And uh, so I, I always, I'm, I'm usually coming in about the time that some of the shows get out. And uh, it, it's, it's like, because I live in the building, by the way, folks. Uh, so it, it's just listening to people's voices and, and they come up to me if they recognize me and they just start telling me about how wonderful it was. That's what I'm looking forward to. I want to know how their experience was. Because that's why we're here. Yeah, thank you, John. Julietta. Um, I think right now, the one of the things I do miss the most um, is our summer camp. Uh, we did cancel um, our summer camp sessions, but I always did enjoy seeing the kids sitting in their little chairs with their little scripts um, and uh, singing in the lobby, um, although they're very, very loud. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're just to see their smiling faces and just being so happy to be there is what I miss too. Yeah. Well, she likes kids. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> I think we all like the idea of them and yeah. certainly when they're singing. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you, Julieta. Brielle, what, what, what about you? So some of you might be familiar with the fact that we ask our patrons to fill out a survey after they have seen a show. And I love reading through those because sometimes you will get the most thought provoking response that people really spent some time, you know, um, thinking about the show that they saw and wanting to share that with us. So I love reading through those and seeing, you know, how it's in whatever show it is, is impacting the people seeing it. And you'll always be a little surprised by, you know, the feedback, but I, I love um, seeing, you know, those responses because you can tell just from reading that, that we really are making an impact on people. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Aaron, what about you? I will be excited when we have our returning guest artists back. The Bradford is very empty, it's very quiet, and it's like a little community up there whenever we have our theater family all in one place, just yeah. who needs a cup of sugar? Go knock on your next door neighbor. Oh, it's okay, right. it's the stage manager. Here you go, sorry. <laughs> So I can't wait for them to come back. I'm going to remind you you said that next year when we're <laughs> It's recorded, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Daniel. 
Yeah, you know, I, I would echo what everybody else has said. It's it's a magical thing when we're all together in the theater, you know, and I mean, everybody here knows that because you all come and see the shows. And it's, uh, it's a shared experience. And, you know, I miss being around the volunteers. I miss seeing the people, the excitement, and, and, and just the way that we feel um, being at the theater, you know. Um, so I, I look forward to having people back in the space producing our season. Excellent. Thank you all so much. Greg, I wanted to, uh, before we before we end for the day, I wanted to throw it to you. You can answer that question too, about what it is you might be missing. But uh, any any thoughts from you uh, as, we, as we say hello to our admin staff here today? Yes, yeah, sure. And before I do that, if I may, I saw uh, a question, Ron, from you about revenue on the property. And I figured I'd answer that because that's something Thank that... Uh, uh, John and I work with um, diligently and, and on an hourly basis. Um, there really, I, I, there really isn't any revenue. Um, here, here's the craziest thing: um, the property that we have, we, we do think one day that if we develop that property across the street, that's kind of going to be the annuity for the theater company. But mm -hmm. the, uh, of the Bradford, if you factor in um, all of the costs to run that um, that building. And if you factor in what our taxes are, uh, that, that will assuredly go up. We're trying to get tax forgiveness from the city. We're working with our lawyers on that right now uh, to try and enable that to happen because so much of those spaces are occupied by us, you know, and we're a not-for-profit organization. So we're hoping to be able to get that. Um, what a lot of people are unaware of is that when we were in that space, the city used to pay for a large chunk of that space to the Smith family that owned the property beforehand. Well, as soon as we took over ownership of that property, not only was that money discontinued, we had to credit back to the city of Fort Myers a big chunk of money. So that was a huge part of the revenue stream for the Bradford block, which we are no longer seeing. So right now, that, that's really not a revenue stream for us. I think in someday it may be. The real annuity for the company is going to be the development of the property across the street. Now, that's not to sound like we're Indeed. sad at all. We're yeah. so grateful to have it. Uh, it's an amazing thing. This is an amazing piece of uh, of property, and we're so grateful because what it really does uh, supply us with is a is a the fact that we now owned our own space. Uh, we're able to apply for capital improvement grants that we never could have applied for before, and we also have spaces for our visiting artists that we uh, normally would have paid uh, rent on. Now we can choose to not pay rent on that. But I'll let you know that we've been paying rent on it all season. Uh, mm -hmm. There, there was, we needed to have that money in the coffers to be able to pay for the running of the property. And the, I won't even talk to you about what the taxes are, but there, it's, it's obscene. Uh, but you know, that's another, that's another story. But I do want to, so I hope that answers your and question. He did, you know, he all, Ron uh, also asked, is there a debt load on it? Uh, did you mention whether it's? No, no, we, here's, here's the great thing. We, it's, the, the property is, is free and clear. Uh, so there is no, there is no debt load on it. The load is, is for the operating of the property. Uh, which if you include our, our maintenance team, if you include the property management team uh, and all the other entities that are involved uh, on the property, it's basically, um, it, it, we basically come out even on it when we look at- That's what, right. We have not been able to, we, in other words, we've not been able to extract uh, any revenue from the LLCs into our not-for-profit organization to help with um, operating expenses of Florida Rep. They're just, the funds just aren't there. Um, hopefully, when we're able to develop that property across the street, we'll see some of that. Of course, that's going to be a few years down the road. Um, right now, uh, without d diving into too much of it, of course, we're all dealing with what, where are we right now? You know, where is the theater right now? But before I chat about that, and I want—I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just want to say that this is. Um, you know, when I I was so excited for, uh, I've been excited for all the stage at homes. I think they're great. I missed one last week and I, I hate, I, I was I was so angry with myself that I missed it. I had technical issues at home that I was having to take care of with, with the internet and all that kind of stuff. And I was not able to, to be on the call. But um, this is one when I, you know, when Jason and I discussed this whole thing way, way back before we even ended our season, uh, quite frankly, we knew that we wanted to have uh, you know, some something else to offer. And Jason and I and Brielle, we sat down, you know, we chatted about this, you know, what this could be. And I was so excited for all the topics, but I was especially excited for, for this topic uh, because I think that so often uh, uh, people who come to the theater have no idea about all the separate little jobs, all the very specialized jobs that go on to run this organization and not just to run it, but to run it well. 
John said something so so poignant at the beginning of this call that we are, you know, this is a great team. And I know, you know, it goes without saying, I know all of you on the call right now, it's very easy for you to tell just by digesting all these wonderful personalities up here, uh, how wonderful they are at their job. It's a great team. Dare I say, uh, we are a family. Um, but probably even uh, more important to uh, to our community and to our angel donors, and I see many of you on the call. I see, I see Sonny, I see Alex, I see Bill and Pat. I mean, I see a lot of people. I know Noreen's on the call. So many people on the call right now give so much uh, to Florida Rep uh, to help us uh, uh, stay afloat. I will let you guys all know that this is not only a, a wonderful team, a family team, it, it is, it, these guys are pros, man. These guys, I mean, these are the cream of the crop. Who you see, who I'm seeing on the top of my screen, that's the, the panel that I see. Um, you, are, you are looking at leaders in this field. Don't be, don't be confused by their young faces. I want to tell you, <laughs> these guys, these young, I want to say kids, some of you guys are kids to me, sorry. But you, you, you are, they, they are brilliant. They are brilliant at their jobs and they work so well together. And uh, I mean, it, it really is, you know, uh, you know, anybody who's run any business understands. I mean, they're, you're, you're only as good as the people that are on your team. You're only as good as the people that you have in your building. And we are so blessed, so, so blessed to have uh, uh, this amazing team. And I saw Sunny's post earlier. She's been with the company for 20 years on the board. And she's, That's right. she's never seen it. Yeah, she's never seen a team this good. And I, I, I couldn't agree. I, I, I got to tell you, I cannot, I cannot imagine uh, a, a better team of artisans, of administrators, of technicians, uh, of creative marketers. I, I, I just, I cannot imagine it. And we're, we're so, we are just so, so blessed. And, and here's what I, I would leave you with. You know, one of the things we talked about way, way in the beginning when we launched this series is we didn't want to make appeals. We didn't want to hit people up. You know, I, I did. I wanted to hit people up for money, but Brielle talked me out of it. Because <laughs> she's smarter. She's smarter than I am. And, and, you know, and I said, you know what? You're right. We shouldn't do that. We could have a little soft push at the end or whatever, but let's not, you know, let's just give folks who have given so much to us. Let's give back in a way where we share. And, um, and, and this is never meant to be an appeal, but I, I do want you all to just keep all of us in your, in your thoughts and, and in your hearts, because we are, we are going through as our, as is so many, so many organizations, so many individuals, we're going through a rough time. And, and John and I have had to make some very hard decisions uh, that involve a lot of people that we, we not only uh, care about and respect, but that we love. And, um, and we know that we are gonna get through this. I have no doubt that is not lip service. We will get through this. Uh, we will figure that out. We don't know at this point when we can come back. That stuff, that, that wind is shifting every single day as we look. And sometimes it shifts to the left and sometimes to the right. That wasn't a political statement. But, um, uh, but, I, but I do wanna say, you know, uh, it, we, we, are, we are so blessed to have when we do come back, when we do come back and we, we will be back and everyone will be back. Um, but this, you know, this, this, where we are now with, with people having to be laid off and where we're going in terms of where we are fiscally and what we're looking at in terms of, uh, you know, how, how we're going to get through all of this financially, um, just keep us in your thoughts, keep us in your prayers. Um, we know John and I know we're, we're going to do it. Uh, we know, we, we know partly and probably mostly because we have such an amazing family. And when I say family, I include everybody on the screen and everybody else that, uh, that, that gives so generously to the theater in, in, you know, financially of their time, of their wisdom. Uh, they're, they're so, you know, we, we are, we are a strong arts organization, uh, because of everyone who's involved. And, and, and I say this every time I chat, you guys are all part of this family. Everybody on this call is part of this, this family. And we're so grateful for, for all of you, but just keep us, keep us in, keep us in your, in your hearts and your minds and your prayers. Cause we're, you know, we're, we're definitely like so many, we're going through a rough, rough patch. We will get through it. We will get through it, but uh, we'll get through it with you guys. And, um, and we know that we have you guys on our, on our shoulders. So uh, that's all, that's my, that's my sermon. Sorry, didn't mean to sound so, so preachy, but it's also an emotional time for, uh, for many of us. So um, God bless you guys. And, uh, and with all that said, I'll turn the mic over to, to Jason. Great, thanks to our panel. Do you have any final thoughts uh, for, uh, for our viewers today? Any final thoughts of gratitude or anything you want them to know uh, that they didn't know before? Anyone on the panel, John? I want everyone to stay safe. 
healthy, vital, and involved. And we can't wait to see you again in the arcade and art stage. Yeah, thank you all for being here with us. I mean, truly, you know, the outpouring of support, we feel it. You know, we feel it by you engaging on these uh, stage at home sessions and just talking to you on the phone and your emails. Just thank you. You know, it really, really means a lot to us. It's amazing. Thank you. Anyone else from the panel? Aaron, please. <laughs> I mean, I have apartments. They need new things. If you're getting rid of anything, let me know. I'll come pick yes. it up. I, I believe mean, Eric earlier houses. said. I'm recognizing some faces. <laughs> I can pick it up. Uh, Do you want someone... that sweet little face showing up at your house with that little accent? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes, Eric. Eric mentioned earlier that uh, that he has electronics and stereos, and I have an email address for you, Aaron. So, uh, at least one person said it. Um, I think that that about does it for all of us today. So thank you all so much for tuning in again this week for this week's Stage thank at Home. Thank you. Yes, please join me in thanking our panelists for spending the afternoon with us and taking time out of your very busy schedules. Uh, to our Stage at Home viewers, a reminder that this uh, that past virtual talkbacks are all available on Florida Rep's YouTube and Facebook pages. And we're now a free podcast on Spotify, Google Playlists, Anchor Breaker, Radio Public. You can just search for Stage at Home on any of those platforms and you can listen while you drive, work, cook, or have a cocktail. Uh, we have an exciting panel lined up for you next week as we check in with a whole panel of former interns from across departments. It's just a coincidence that so many of our panel today were former interns. Uh, but next week, um, uh, uh, we'll hear from, from a whole panel of interns. Uh, you've already heard from a number of them, uh, actors, directors, and designers on past panels. But next week, we'll have six past interns going back as far as 2007 to see what paths they've taken since, uh, since their time here and how the internship helped them along their way. So it is not to be missed. You're not going to want to miss that one. For updates about Florida Rep and Stage at Home, follow us on Facebook, YouTube. Make sure you're on our email list and visit the news and event, events page, page at floridarep.org. And again, thank you all for spending the afternoon with us. And while we can't gather in the theater, we're here for you on the airwaves. So from all of us at Florida Rep, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.